So uh, first, I want to acknowledge all of my collaborators who've actually done all of the work. Uh, so Adam Kearney, Carl Jasmine, Jody Guerra, and and uh, Aaron Lefra, um, as well as Atsushi Senju, Tim Smith, and John O'Batten, uh, who are responsible for all of the teaching. So. Uh, one of the reasons that, that we got interested in using online experimentation, particularly with Gorilla, is that, that um, Birkbeck College uh, is a special place in that, in that we do um, research during the days, uh, but then all of our undergraduate students come in at night. So all classes are on weekday evenings. Uh, the students, uh, by and large, work full time during the day. Uh, and this makes it very difficult for undergraduates and indeed an increasing number of our master's students to actually do experiments during the day because they're making money trying to pay for student fees. Um, it also makes it very difficult for them to collaborate, particularly the undergraduates. Um, so we have, as with all psychology departments, requirements in terms of uh, the kinds of research projects that students have to do. So they have to do excuse me, um, many projects, uh, which are delimited um, group projects that happen in a research methods uh, class, as well as final year research projects, which take about five months total to run. Uh, it are really hard to do, uh, particularly when people can't come in the evenings. It makes the end really constrained, uh, so it's hard for students to get to their, uh, their, get their participants. Everyone's tired, both participants and experimenters. Um, students in general uh, are, do not have exploring experience. Uh, we don't have that many computer resources for all 120 students to actually do programming all the time and test all the time. Uh, and obviously lab space is pretty limited. Um, so a lot of what we do, for, particularly for many projects, uh, is basically have staff program experiments, which what I would say is educational value. Uh, and uh, rather than actual uh, creation of new uh, new research, so um, we this past year uh, got a Gorilla departmental license, uh, which was rolled out both for uh, teaching in our advanced research methods uh, class, but also for final year projects. Um, and just as a quick result, I'm not being paid uh, by Gorilla for doing this. Um, uh, this is actual feedback. So in advanced research methods, uh, which is generally, uh, particularly for the mini projects, been a um, not the most popular program in our department. Uh, uh, Atsushi uh, and Tim got really positive feedback from the students as well as from the, the TAs that work for the class. Um, students were actually able to program their experiments for the first time. This is very unlike certain other uh, uh, experiment um, drivers like E-Prime. Um, this seemed like a sort of small thing, but the fact that, that students don't actually need dongles or license keys made stuff a lot easier, and there was a lot less uh, administrative burden uh, for teachers for not having to faff around with these, uh, these um, uh, license keys and help people install stuff. It just worked. Um, and particularly for, for Birkbeck students uh, who really have problems coming in uh, and when are they going to do it? They're going to do it, they're actually going to participate after 9 p.m. at, at night um, uh, on class days. Uh, this really allowed them to collect, to let, collect data in much less stressful uh, circumstance um, and spend a lot more time actually thinking about the design of the experiments and analyses. So I'm going to go to some testimonials now, uh, because I, not only are they kind of um, uh, nice to hear about online experimentation, but there were things that I didn't think about personally as being advantages. Um, so a number of the demonstrators uh, commented that, that students actually learned a lot more about experimental design. So you can see the quote, having the possibility to collect reaction times unusual in, um, in online experimentation. Uh, the students could explore more complex relationships among variables and also elaborate various hypotheses. Um, uh, and that because they were actually to, able to program these tasks, uh, they could think more about how to design them in the first place rather than basically copying uh, a previous, uh, a previous uh, paradigm. Um, sorry, that's my thumb. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they also learned a lot more about what real data look like. Uh, so when they were able to look at data clearing, 
uh, data cleansing, uh, understand what the process of that was. Uh, they learned not just more about about what real data looked like, but also how to how to analyze it uh, in SPSS. Um, and yes, we are looking for something that would remove SPSS from a lifestyle. Um, but so, as they said, so we learned uh, they've learned much more about SPSS functions analyses because they had to create the SPSS data file, manipulating and sifting among a myriad of Excel columns. So, at, if you worked with uh, Grail, you know that it outputs a lot of data. Um, and so this was one thing that I really had not considered, is that it really promoted collaboration between students. Um, so they are able to, through the Grail platform, to collaborate on the project design, uh, on the data analysis, um, and, and really build things from the ground up with much less input and guidance uh, and browbeating from the, uh, the lecturer and, and uh, demonstrators than, than in previous years. Um, so, and they actually did, they, I think they felt empowered uh, to, use, uh, to, uh, to use the platform and actually solve problems for themselves. So as one of the other demonstrators said, the students found creating an Excel file the most difficult part of the development process. Um, so this is in, in, in Grill, as you may know, the way that you actually set up an experiment. Um, however, the extensive tutorials available on the Grillo website were sufficient to address any issues. Um, so this really allowed them to, to, to kind of uh, take hold of their, uh, of their project and, and move forward in a way that was really not possible before. Um, so a uh, second type of, of experiment that we've been running at, at uh, Birkbeck this year is using them in undergraduate final year projects. Uh, so I'll just take as a case study this joint project with Adam Tierney, where he actually did most of the work. Um, and this was using a relatively new paradigm that we've developed on um, uh, both uh, understanding, but particularly uh, developing and hopefully improving uh, sustained auditory selective attention. So we had six uh, undergrad students in the lab this year who collaborated on uh, testing an online battery of sustained auditory attention tasks on uh, inhibitory control, rhythmic skill task, a speech comprehension and noisy surroundings task, and then a couple of other surveys. Um, and so it's quite a lot for, for students to get through. Often uh, they have difficulties with these kind of task batteries, but the fact that we could actually put it online in a way where, where the um, students and also the, uh, the participants could just go through one task after another uh, uh, actually allowed us to do it. So all these were programmed in Gorilla uh, by Adam or me uh, or Kyle uh, Jasmine, except for the um, the uh, auditory attention task uh, for various reasons. Um, so uh, most of that was that that at the point that we were uh, that we were um, uh, working on this uh, responses uh, in particular bump presses were hard to collect basically during sound presentation. Uh, that was the same for the auditory strip, but uh, Grell has been working out that in the meantime, so this is uh, definitely much easier to do now. Um, so instead, what we were able to do is send students back and forth between the um, uh, uh, between our departmental website, where the, uh, where the attention task was hosted, and Grell, and that worked really well. Uh, and people were really efficient at this, so we were able to get the experiments down uh, so that it only took about 30 minutes total, including all the surveys. So uh, this was quite exceptional. So we were actually able to get a research study done with undergrad projects. And uh, so the students collected data from 93 participants um, across Europe in about a month and a half. And that included uh, uh, the, the winter holidays. And they were recruited for, through friends, Facebook groups, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the students really concentrated on getting professional and semi-professional musicians um, who are hard to get. Um, so having recruited a number of musician groups uh, over my career, uh, I was very impressed by, by uh, him being able to do this. So one of the first things that we worried about was, are these data going to be usable from these you know, people who are just sort of recruited online? And they really are. So Adam has actually just uh, written a nice draft for the paper. Uh, the data looked good. There were really not very many outliers. Um, they were in line with our previous in-lab um, uh, uh, experiments uh, using the same paradigms, and the correlations between the subconditions of the experiments 
uh, were quite good. So it suggested that that we were, um, you know, actually getting good quality data and also able to tell uh, the few cases where people were really flaking out. Um, so that was really uh, that was a real success. So that's the first time that I've at least able to get publishable data uh, from undergrad students in uh, uh, at Birkbeck in over a decade, simply because of these these problems with uh, uh, collecting enough data and enough time. Um, so we also use uh, Gorilla for a lot of our our uh, lab auditory research in the Apple Lab. So um, we've used it for testing a, um, a speech song illusion that, that uh, Adam Tierney has, has done quite a lot of um, uh, for testing quite uh, subtle um, contrasts of, of language, so prosodic use, as well as music uh, use of pitch contours and relative duration cues in order to extract meaning. Uh, and Kyle Jasmine uh, recently set up a really exhaustive uh, auditory cue weighting paradigm, uh, which is the kind of thing that's quite painful to do in the lab and would have been completely impossible for this particular project uh, because we needed to go back to a really rare population of uh, and music subjects that are distributed all over uh, the sort of southern half of the UK. And we wanted to get an extra, um, an extra um, set of, of data from them and Kyle basically did it in like two weeks. Uh, and the results are very, very clean, very robust, um, uh, even from a really um, quite quasi-psychophysics uh, type of paradigm. So that was really exciting. Um, so there are obviously a few challenges of, uh, that are particular to auditory uh, research. Uh, so the first and maybe last is quality control. So um, obviously this happens with every modality, but, but particularly with, uh, with um, auditory experience, we care a lot about headphones. So using headphones versus loudspeakers um, can have a huge effect on your, different, on your, uh, your results. Um, there is a really nice um, uh, paradigm that um, Josh McDermott's group has come up with, um, I have the citation there, um, that actually allows you to use some phase canceling um, uh, tests uh, that that basically show whether or not someone is actually using speakers when they're not supposed to uh, to catch people out uh, when they're disobeying your um, your uh, your uh, experiment regulations to actually use headphones. Uh, and Kyle Jasmine has has uh, used that. It works pretty well. Um, Another issue that, of course, um, we have, and anyone who does online experimentation is, is how to actually monitor um, uh, the level of distraction. So are people sitting in a noisy room and watching TV um, with auditory experiments that is potentially even harder in that, uh, uh, in that um, we, you know, we are not showing them usually something on the, on the screen, uh, so we can't show them catch trials on the screen, which is something that we're kind of coming to do. Uh, so that's still kind of work in progress. Um, so the one place where I would say we've had a failure so far is actually with more extended training studies. So even with a couple of hours of training uh, without putting a lot of bells and whistles on uh, making the uh, experiments very game-like, uh, we got quite a lot of flack from, from online participants that we recruited uh, about, about doing the paradigms that actually were okay in the lab. Uh, but we had really a lot of dropouts uh, that was pretty uh, expensive, actually, uh, from our um, from the sole training experiment that we've done completely online using online recruitment. That said, um, I'm just going to show you uh, an exciting new result from Maria Chase lab uh, with the um, that's been run by the amazing uh, CJ Zhao, our um, our joint grad student. Um, which did uh, auditory psychophysics uh, uh, and a um, really painful uh, um, salience judgment task uh, on a number of, of uh, stimuli. And what I'm showing you here in the center is the correlation between the uh, in-lab uh, rank of the salience of different uh, auditory objects and the rank that was determined by testing in a large uh, number of, of mechanical Turk subjects. And you can see that, that the correlation is really, really high. There's very good stability in that. Uh, so that was really exciting because this is the kind of really um, uh, very difficult 
and really tedious lab work that we would love to get rid of. So if we can, if we can do that uh, online, uh, that's very exciting. So um, I'll just close with some coming attractions. So Gorilla has very kindly um, uh, been programming up adapted thresholding uh, for doing auditory and, and uh, visual psychophysics. Uh, this is the kind of thing that we, again, really would like to do online and get more data from uh, and, and uh, get more subjects doing a little bit less time uh, so they don't get so bored. Um, uh, a couple of things that were kind of on our wish list are interactive control of the thresholding and levels uh, over training so it can be more adaptive as people um, uh, get, to, get to particular uh, behavioral thresholds and then also reminders and feedback to participants who might be recalcitrant in terms of the, uh, of the training. Uh, so uh, that's it, and um, I will stop staring into the black screen and see if there are any questions from Joe. Uh,